So this is probably the most controversial question of the entire interview, but I think most programs are starting to lose the sight of what quantitative finance is and how do we narrow that down into an actual definition. And of course, I'm always up on my soapbox telling people, if you're not building models of some sorts, you're not a quant. It's sort of strange, but teaching abstract thinking is actually useful for like what happens later in life because it's sort of in the nature of abstraction that one is taking the essence of a of a problem and reasoning about it without necessarily you know dealing with all the details so mm-hmm. so the you know there's this joke that mathematicians you know are are people who are such that everything they say is true, but they never know what they're talking about. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that's how math can be defined. And so you ask what quantitative finance can be defined. Well, we define the quantitative side of that is that everything you're saying is true, but you don't know what you're talking about. And so, you know, so let's say maybe the finance side of that is so that we are actually know something about what we're talking about. And, um, you know, so, you know, as a concrete example, you know, I was taught at UCLA when I did my PhD there, um, so-called Ross arbitrage pricing theory, the factor model that he developed in the 70s. And it's an abstract thing. You know, there's N factors, none of them named, and uh, they have certain statistical properties, like they're uncorrelated with each other, and there's an error term of uncorrelated with that. And, you know, but, but let's say it's all, it's math, okay? But let's say it's, you know, it's up to you to apply it, let's say. But it was, it's actually been very useful in my career to sort of organize my thinking as a framework. So that's kind of, let's say, something that, you know, can be taught in an academic setting that's actually, I think, useful later in life, even though, let's say, it's, it's not, you know, as presented, completely applied. It's, it's really just a way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And, you know, later, you'll be, you know, attaching financial um, realities to these abstract variables. So that's sort of a, a way to, you know, just to summarize it, a way to sort of maximally communicate um, relevant Way, modes of thinking is is via actually abstract approaches since um, you know they're sort of by definition going to cover uh, two or more dis- you know distinct applications, which is very much in line with what you were saying. I think so. So you know, get the basics across, like like linear regression, without knowing what necessarily the dependent variable is as a name and what the independent variable is as a name, you know? So, so it's okay. I mean, if you know how the, you know, there's a theory for that, it's important to know, I'd say, uh, just because, um, you know, that's one of the most, you know, that and Taylor series are probably the most widely used things uh, in, in practice, you know? 